Steve Wynn, the billionaire casino mogul who is credited with revolutionizing the Las Vegas Strip, is in the process of dumping $300 million worth of personal real estate that he holds all over the United States. Steve has homes in Palm Beach, New York, Beverly Hills, and Idaho that he's looking to sell, and every single one of these homes are trophy properties that only the richest of the rich could even afford. But the first thing that comes to my mind when I see this headline is, why is he getting so aggressive trying to sell all of these houses? Does this have something to do with the incoming recession and the declining housing market? Is he selling because of the whole scandal and allegations against him from former Wynn employees? Or is he just simplifying his life since the guy is 80 years old now and probably not traveling all over the country to use these houses all that much anymore? Well, today we'll see if we can answer that question. Plus, I was able to track down the address for every one of these homes that he has for sale, so we have to check out the list things together. Now before we pull up the real estate portfolio, let's just review Steve Wynn's life story really quick because it's seriously unbelievable how this $3.3 billion man came to be. He was born on January 27th, 1942 in Connecticut. In 1963, Steve's father passed away, so he dropped out of school to help out his family. In 1967, at the age of 25, he moved out to Las Vegas. He bought a stake in the casino Frontier, and he bought a liquor importing company. By 1977, he took majority ownership in the casino The Golden Nugget and put them through a major renovation. Around 1980, Steve moved out to Atlantic City temporarily to build a Golden Nugget there, which he later sold for $440 million. In 1989, he was back in Las Vegas. He built and opened the Mirage Casino on the Las Vegas Strip. This one cost 630 million bucks. By 1993, he built and opened the Treasure Island Casino. This one cost him 450 million. Then, just a few years later, by 1998, Wynn had built and opened the Bellagio Resort and Casino, probably his most impressive project to date. This one cost $1.6 billion. In 1999, kind of random, but he developed an 1800 room hotel in Biloxi, Mississippi called the Bu Rivage. In the year 2000, he sold his Mirage Casino to MGM Grand for $4.4 billion. Fast forward to 2005, he finished construction on the hotel that he's probably most known for, the Wynn, right on the Las Vegas Strip. This one cost $2.7 billion to pull off. Then just a year later, in 2006, he opened up a Wynn Hotel and Casino in Macau. Two years after that, in 2008, Steve opened up the Encore Hotel and Casino in Vegas. This one cost $2.3 billion to complete. And then by 2010, of course, he had to open up an Encore in Macau as well. From 2010 on, Steve Wynn was very active in operating his casinos, and he also got pretty involved in politics for a bit as well. But by January 2018, he actually stepped down as CEO of win resorts after misconduct allegations from a casino employee. Whoa. We have talked about a lot of successful business people here on the channel over the years, but I'm kind of exhausted just looking at this guy's resume. Steve Wynn's hard work comes with plenty of accolades, including being one of Time Magazine's world's most influential people. Forbes named him a captain of capitalism, and Barron's called him one of the 30 world's best CEOs. I can't speak to whether or not those accusations against Steve Wynn are legit, but you can't deny that as a real estate developer, his accomplishments are beyond impressive. So Steve Wynn is kind of a collector of everything expensive. He has an art collection that's worth several hundred million dollars. He's got a $200 million yacht. And in 2012, he bought a 230 carat diamond before mounting it in a Cartier Platinum necklace. But like I said at the start of the video, he owns a bunch of luxury real estate too, 300 million of which is currently for sale. So let's check out those listings. Okay, so first up we have 30 1350 North Lake Way in Palm Beach, Florida. This one he is asking $78.5 million for. The home has seven bedrooms, nine bathrooms, about 17,000 square feet of space, and it was built back in 2013. Before we check out the pictures, if we scroll down here, let's see what Steve bought this place for. So he bought this deal in 2021, so not long 
go for $49 million. Here's the front door and what you see when you approach the house. So you can pull off either to the left here or to the right. It looks like it's got room for about eight cars in the garages. And then you can park a bunch more cars out in this like cobblestone courtyard area. This is the view that you have after you walk through the front door. There's the staircase that kind of winds up there to the right with a loft area in the top. And then it looks like straight ahead is probably like a living room or a family room. Here's a view from in that living room looking back at the front door. And probably the most impressive part of this room is that coffered ceiling. Really nice kitchen. I mean, it's not my style, but you've got the double islands. All the finishes in here are top notch. The cabinetry, the countertops, the appliances. You can just tell this is an expensive kitchen. The home has this wood clad like lounge slash library slash office room. It's pretty cool. The home, of course, has a temperature controlled wine room. This is one of what looks like a couple of master bedrooms, huge room. The bathroom off of this bedroom has got its own private toilet area, a soaking tub, and then a small shower over there to the left. And then if you flip the camera view, you've got your sink and then a little makeup station. Closet's a nice size. It's not all that impressive as far as the cabinetry goes, at least in my opinion, but really nice size closet, tons of storage with the island in the center. And I love this perspective of the house. So you're looking out over the pool, tons of decking. You've got this covered like TV grilling area over here and then a spa separate from the pool. And then probably the best part of this whole house is that right off the backyard, you have this huge dock so you can come out here and park your yacht or your toys or go fishing or whatever. Palm Beach House isn't bad. Let's cruise over to New York City to check out Steve's penthouse that he has for sale for $90 million. Okay, so the specs on this place, it's actually only a three bedroom. It has six bathrooms and just under 11,000 square feet. Feet. It's located at 50 Central Park South, and this unit is occupying the 30th and 31st floor of the building. It's a historic building. This place was built back in 1931, and before we see how much Steve paid for this place, check out the monthly HOA dues, $19 thousand dollars per month. Anyway, scrolling down here to the price history. So it doesn't actually tell us how much Steve paid for this place, but it was last listed for sale back in 2012. They were asking 77 million 500 for it. So he probably paid somewhere in that neighborhood. As far as photos on this one goes, of course, we start with a view. You're looking right out over Central Park. It's not all that high of a unit being only on the 30th floor, but those views are amazing. Inside, you can still tell that this is more of a historic building because instead of it being basically just a big glass box, you've got all these arched windows. Kind of nice, it's some character. I don't know if this is like the main living room or family room or what. Pretty small room though, but you got a ton of natural light coming in from both sides. You want to get a closer look at those views, you have a huge terrace to hang out on. Okay, and that other room must have been just like a sitting room. So this looks like probably the main living room, wild curtains and carpet in here for sure. But there's a couple of TVs and a couch. Here's the office carrying on with that blue theme. We have what looks like a formal dining room and uh, wow, he must love red. Here's the kitchen. I always laugh when I see these kitchens in New York because this is nothing like you'd see in a kitchen out here in Arizona. Here's the master suite. Huge room, plenty of space in here, a lot of mirrors around the bed, which is kind of weird. The closet has not only its own island, but it has basically a living room inside of the closet too. And then here's the bathroom for that primary suite. Pretty plain, I'm guessing he didn't spend a whole lot of time here. Now I've looked at a lot of apartments for sale in New York. You can get a pretty cool place for more like 10 to $20 million. So I cannot imagine wanting to spend $90 million on a single apartment, but the location is pretty prime. So I'm assuming that's why he's trying to shoot for such a high price point. Anyways, let's cruise over to Beverly Hills and look at Steve's mansion that he has for sale for $100 million. So I'm sure some of you guys have seen this listing before. This is actually the most expensive home in Beverly Hills right now at 1210 Benedict Canyon Drive. It's got 11 bedrooms, 16 bathrooms, and 27,000 square feet. So it's by far the largest that we've looked at so far. This house was built back in 1994. It's sitting on 2.69 acres. And if we scroll down to the price history here, it looks like Steve bought this one in 2015 for about $47 million. Then he relisted it for sale in 2021 for 125 million, but he's had to drop the price a couple of times. He's down to 100 million as of today. The drone shots of these houses are almost always my favorite. So you can see this like long winding driveway that takes you up to the house. 
That detail in the lawn is pretty cool. I'm assuming that's artificial turf. Here's the entrance with a staircase that leads up to that front door, and then these two massive Italian cypress trees on either side of that staircase. Those trees always remind me of California. Whoa, so okay, inside we've got, first of all, another one of these rooms with coffered ceilings, wild carpeting, some blue furniture, and blue on the walls. This shows us another angle of that room, so if you're sitting on those blue couches, you're actually looking out to the view, so that's pretty nice. Here's the office, so when Steve was penning all these multi-billion dollar deals in Vegas, this is probably where some of those deals went down. Of course, the place has a movie theater that sits like 40 people. There's a tennis court way out in the back. There's so many tennis courts in Beverly Hills, but I wonder how many of these people who own these houses actually use them. There is a gym right off that backyard with a ton of commercial equipment, so you could get a good workout in here for sure. And then last, they round the photos out with this random walkway. Not sure what this is, but pretty nice. It's going to take a very unique buyer to spend 100 million bucks on that house. I don't think it's as much about the architecture or the finishes. It's more about the location when you drop that kind of money in Beverly Hills. Okay, and the fourth and final property that Steve is trying to unload right now is in a small town called Ketchum, Idaho. He's asking 27 million bucks for this one. It's got 11 bedrooms, 14 bathrooms, and about 15,000 square feet. The house was built back in 1979, and based on the cover photo, I'm assuming this is somewhere that you wanna spend your winters. So the listing tells us this is actually two separate houses on the same lot, so I'm guessing this is the first primary 11,000 square foot house, and then this other one over here on the side is the 3,000 square foot guest house. From the living room, you've got this amazing view out this picture window at the snow and the trees and the mountains. One thing I've noticed though about every one of these listings is I guess Steve Wynn really loves carpet. It's kind of weird. You don't see carpet in a lot of these luxury listings anymore. Here's the kitchen, pretty modest size, some more cool ceiling detail up here and some windows looking out at the views. You've got another living area with a very neutral color palette throughout and your TV above the fireplace. Pretty grand staircase leading up to the second floor with nice LED strip lighting embedded into the carpet. This looks like the master suite up on the second level. So huge room, great views up here from the second floor and it's got its own fireplace with a seating area. Master bath and closet here are kind of combined. So you've got the closet in the back with a small island and a little patio off the closet it looks like. And then here in the front you've got the sink and the shower. Here's a look inside the closet though. There's actually another sink plus that little makeup station. But check it out. More carpet. The house at nighttime is awesome. The snow is like perfectly plowed for this shot. And I guess now that I look at it this kind of looks like a Bass Pro Shop. But cool house. Now if Steve Wynn really wanted to unload these properties, even in this market, he definitely could. He would just have to drop the price to a point where a buyer showed up. But knowing his obsession with making money in life, especially in real estate, I don't think we're going to see him panic selling any of these homes anytime soon. See, Wynn actually has always kind of been a successful house flipper on the side. He's been flipping houses around Vegas and Palm Beach and making millions while he's at it for years now. Former President Trump actually once complimented wins house flipping business and just said he's a master house flipper and just does it for sport. Going back to the big question though, why dump all of this real estate at this point in his life? Well, Mansion Global reported that an agent who does a lot of business with Wynn says he might just be simplifying his portfolio as he gets older, which kind of makes sense. I think we all can learn something from a quote from Steve Wynn from a couple of years back, and that is, the only way to win in a casino is to own one. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's episode. I'll see you next time.